Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Ross. This is part two of my Table of Contents video series where I'm teaching you how to put a table of contents or an index in your Microsoft Access databases. If you haven't watched part one yet, go watch part one. You'll find a link down below. Go watch that, then come on back. We now resume our program already in progress. Okay, so yesterday we finished up, we got these records in here because all we did was look at page one, right? And that's the problem with generating the report in this way is because if we print preview it, okay, now if I go to page two, I'll get page two records in there. Oh, but look at, I got duplicates of page one because that ran a second time, right? There's me, there's me again, but there's page two. So the first time this thing runs, we're going to have to have it delete all the records in the table. Okay, and then go to the end of the document. Okay, so let's see how we're gonna work that into this. All right, we got some we got some work to do. Let's use this button to do our dirty work, right? We're gonna you're gonna need a button somewhere to open up this report, right? So whatever button you're gonna use, this will be my uh, open customer report button. Okay, right click, build event. Let's go into here now. Now. Before we open the report, we're going to have to delete the table of contents table. So clear the TOC table. And that's going to be current db.execute delete from TOCT. It's that simple. It deletes all the records from that table. Be careful with that command. Now we're ready to open up the report. All right. So open report and generate the TOC. So do command dot open report. Customer contact R, comma, AC view, 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 preview. All right. Got to be in preview mode. All right. Save it. Always throw in a debug compile from time to time. Let's come back over here. Close that. I'm going to open it back up again. And click. Okay. Now, if you look at the table of contents right now, there's all the page one stuff again. So we need to go to the last document, the last page of the document. Click on that, and that'll take us to the last page of the document. And then open it up, and look at that. There's everybody in there. Since it jumped to the end of the document, it processed all of those pages, because it has to know where the last page is. Okay? So now we've got all this page data. Well, what do we do with it? Well, we're going to make another report that represents this table of contents. We're going to stick it in as a sub-report, at the beginning of this report, all right, before the first page. But the problem is we have to run through this first, go to the last page, close it, and then reopen it again for this information to update. Because if you add customers, add contacts, these page numbers are gonna move around, right? So it's gonna involve two passes. You, you could do it by going back to the first page and then requerying stuff. It's just easier to do it this way, all right? So here's what we're gonna do. Let's make a table of contents report and this one will be real simple. Create, report design. And this is why I had you do this first, because we got to have some data in here to see what it's going to look like, right? It, it works better. It, it's just easier that way. So let's set the, rec the record source here to the table of contents table, right? Let's go to bring in the existing fields. We just need the description and the page number. Bring those over here. I'm going to delete the labels again. We don't need a page header. Put the description over here like that. And then the page number over here and bring this bottom up like that. I'm going to left align the description, which it should be already. And I'm going to right align the page number like that. I'm going to open up the detail section. And this is one where I actually do like the alternating colors in here. I think it looks nice. And we can get rid of that page footer too. All right, let's save this. This will be my TOCR. Let's take a look at what this looks like. Print preview. There it goes. That's not bad. Let's get rid of the borders. Right click, design, select, format, shape outline, transparent. Save it. Preview it. Okay, that looks good. That's a nice looking table of contents right there. And yeah, sometimes you have little dots going across. I think if you got this gray shading, you don't need the dots. 
The dots is a whole separate video, folks. <laughs> is it possible? Yeah, it's possible. It's a lot more work, though. I like this better, to be honest. All right, so next we're going to stick this as a sub-report inside the other report. Okay, so right-click, Design View. I'm going to put it on a report header. Okay, and while we're at it, let's put a page number down here, right? Let me grab one of these guys here. I'll just grab that, drop it down here. Let's put it over here on the right. Okay, let's open this up. Let's make this right aligned. Give me your properties. I'll call you the page N, and we'll say this equals page, just like that. Okay, and now... There's my page number, right? And yeah, you adjust the margins and do all that. You know how to do all that stuff, all right? I'm not going to waste time with margins. Okay, let's put in our sub-report in a report header. Remember, the page header goes on top of every page, but a report header, which normally you don't see, goes on top of the entire report. It, it displays once. You can use that for a title page, and we'll put our table of contents on page two. Okay, so right click, I'm gonna turn on the report header footer. Boom, there it is. I'm gonna leave it gray for now, although I'm gonna change this later. I'm, I just so you can see what's going up here. Okay, uh, this is where you'd put a big like title, like, you know, uh, customer contact report. All right, let's make it big. I don't know, 36 point bold, right? This would be like your big title page, right? You center this. Maybe put your logo here, right? I'll just screen capture this one, All right? Click, click, put you in here, paste it, All right? This is going on my page one, okay? Now, let's say page two, I want to be my table of contents. So I'm gonna still keep it in the report header. I'm gonna put a page break control here because this is what I get now, watch this. I can go to print preview. Okay, that's what I've got. There's my report header. That's why I left it gray for you to see. And here's where the document starts. Well, you can throw a manual page break in here. And what's that? Go up here, find, where is it? Where are you? It's this guy. I don't use him that often. All right, we're gonna stick it right there. So you're gonna get a page break there. Okay, now below that, this is where we'll put our table of contents. So we're gonna grab our table of contents report, click and drag, drop it right there. And you can delete the little label that comes in with it. Okay, and there's your table of contents. And you could put a label above it if you want. I, I know I just deleted the label, but you could put something up here that's like table of contents. Right, table of contents, make it look pretty. Format it, make it look, I don't know, 20 point, bold, whatever. Okay, and then what you're probably going to want is another page break underneath this. Because you're going to want a table of contents on a page by itself. Or you might not. Depends on, how, you know, what you want. Uh, the problem is, is this table of contents has to stay a static size. And I'll, I'll explain why in a minute. Um, so let's find another page break and drop you right there. And we'll bring this up, right up against that. Okay. Well, let's take a look at what we got. Print preview. Okay, there's page one. There's page two, and there's the rest of it. And in fact, as you can see, we got a little tiny bit of that spilling over. So I think instead of that second page break, I think what we'll do is, let me get rid of that second page break. Sometimes, sometimes I have ideas for things in my head and they look better when you actually do it. We'll leave it like that, and we're gonna go to the properties for the report header, and we're gonna say force new page after section. So after this section, after the report header is displayed, it's gonna force a new page there. We won't get a teeny tiny bit of that spilling over onto the next page. And we can get rid of this page header here. You can put stuff in there if you want to. It doesn't matter. Save that. And now let's take a peek. There's page one. There's page two. And there's page three. Now, page three is actually where the first customer is. But if you look at the table of contents data, it thinks I'm on page one. Because when this thing runs and it fills that table with data, it was on page one. So let's close this and let's open her up again. Okay, page one. Oh, wait a minute, the table of contents is blank. Why is it blank now? Let's see, page three, there's some data, okay. 
Why is this blank? Let's take a look at the table. What's going on here? Oh, wait, okay, I'm only seeing page three data in there now. What's, what's going on? Well, I just closed it, reopened it. When you reopened it, what happened was the first line in here ran that deleted all the data from the table, right? Okay, so the table's blank. That's why the table of contents is blank. As soon as I open, let me do it again, right? Right now, when I click on that, at this moment, none of those other page headers have, have run, so the table of contents is blank, right? So if I go to it now, if I look at it, it's empty. As soon as I go to the next page, now all of these section headers ran and filled the table with their bit of data, and now it's correct because they're on page three. See what's going on? Okay, and if I go to page four and open up the table data, you can see there, now the rest of the data is in there. All right, so what we have to do is we have to get this report to generate all of those pages first, then we gotta come back and run it again to see all that data properly in the table of contents. And we'll get to that tomorrow. So come on back tomorrow, folks. Same bad time, same bad channel for part three. Or, of course, if you remember, sign up right now. You can watch it right now. I'm getting ready to record it. It's going to be fun. That's going to be your tech help video for today. Oh, wait a minute. We're on part two. Part two. <laughs> right? Come back tomorrow for part three, folks. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you tomorrow. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member, and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered.
And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.